Yeah, but I'll tell you, I see some people, they do this leg press and they only got like 90 degrees. And yeah, of course, you can do like 10 or 12 plates a side. You know what I mean? So yeah. But yeah. start going that much deeper, it makes it a lot humble, more humbling and harder, right? Well, nice even also, like they'll put the um, the seat pad up so it automatically shortens your range of motion. Sure. You can oh, get before, yeah. your hips, before your hips get a little rebound off of your gut. Yeah. And um, this, like, it allows you to kind of open up so your knees go outside of your hips a little bit. Yeah, so yeah. So you're getting that a little extra inch or two um, in that range of motion. So, yeah. And an inch or two can make all the difference. That's, that is yeah, what your wife said, buddy. That is what, that is what Mrs. Gibson said. She does say that. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome back to Blood, Sweat, and Gear with coaches Skip Hill, Andrew Berry, myself, Scott McNeely, and we are joined by a, well, not quite depleted. He's got a high day today, but he's closing in on the show, Nate Spear. What's going on, man? How you been? What's up, guys? Uh, doing good. Um, about two and a half weeks out from Toronto Pro, first show of the season, so. Hell yeah. Well, we're going to talk all about that today. We want to pick Nate's brain because it is pretty carb depleted right now we can have some fun with him it, we, we want to give you guys a, a picture of of what it's like being two and a half weeks out from a show when you're in this kind of condition we've got some of his pictures we're going to show you and everything else uh, let me tell you too that all of our programming is brought to you by you the people of patreon thank you guys for all your support over there uh it's overwhelming to have our listeners actually contributing to the show i really appreciate each and every one of you we're also brought to you by truenutrition.com use our code think for additional savings supplement source dot c8 for canadians great deals that change week to week and uh yeah if you're new to our content please uh subscribe and hit the bell because we have several bodybuilding podcasts that come out each week you'll learn a lot from us you'll have some fun along the way let's turn it over to nate man and and of course if anybody's tuning in uh andrew barry who is below nate is uh nate's coach and you guys are as you said nate two and a half weeks out We've got some pictures, man. I'll roll those up in a minute. But just let us know, man, what's going on right now. You said you got a high day today? Yeah, so we get a day of 700 grams of carbs. Um, so that's very nice. And then a low activity day, which is also very nice, obviously. So being two and a half weeks out, especially in the kind of condition that I'm in, we're definitely ahead of schedule a little bit early. So probably by the weekend, we'll be fully 100% ready. Like we could probably step on stage. I mean, Andrew even thinks maybe yesterday we could have, but um, either way, that just is sort of selling, saying the energy is very low. Um, the thinking is obviously not very fast. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of things are just sort of slowing down. Your feet are much heavier. Um, but what I was saying earlier is just like, because I'm a little bit ahead of schedule. Yeah. Sometimes it's necessi not necessarily like how much food you're eating, but how much body fat you have on your body, right? You guys all know that. So what I'm saying is just the energy is low because there's not much much body fat on me at the moment you know like the lower back skin is just very thin now you know that's where i usually hold a lot of body fat like those last areas are starting to come off the glutes are getting striated and uh, only going to get a little bit more so um so definitely starting to hit that fatigue wall a little bit um but the best thing about this prep so far has been my sleep has actually been <clears throat> really really good which usually doesn't happen for me hmm. uh usually i'll be up at like 3 a.m 4 a.m and sort of wide awake and just sort of ride that out and maybe take a nap later in the day and do the best I can. And it's been a big difference as far as my energy. Like I said, my energy was lower, but it's way better than it has been in the past due to that, <clears throat> you know, sleep uh, being much better. Um, but I will say this, we've, this is probably the hardest we've pushed since I can remember um, as far as like, you know, less free meals for me, um, lower carbs, cardio. We've usually been around the same area at the same time frame, but my carbs have been pretty steady now at 125, which <clears throat> for a guy that's, you know, I'm two. So this morning I was 250 pounds. Um, like I said, pretty much ready. The weight will probably be fluctuate from 250 to 253 um, between now and showtime. So that's pretty much what I'll weigh. <clears throat> um, to touch on that as well, um, when you, when a lot of us, especially the bigger guys or the more muscular guys that have been doing it for a while, you know, once you get to that week five, week four, your weight sort of sort of stalls, and you, at least for myself, I get harder and drier, but like the weight sort of sticks. Obviously, the compounds and the anabolics that we're adding in as well <clears throat> is sort of taking hold of that. And also, too, like as you get leaner, you're not going to make as big of a drop, right? Because you're not having as much body fat coming off like week to week. It sort of slows down as well. So, um, 
yeah, so pretty much, you know, the weight starts slowing down and it starts sticking really good. And then, um, but yeah, I was saying my, my carbs have been lower than ever. Uh, so pre and post is all we're doing for carbs right now. Um, just, you know, pretty much like 250 grams of rice <clears throat> um, for each meal and then maybe some cream rice some days, but uh, pretty low on the food. And then we've been sort of in a consistent groove as far as, you know, usually Wednesday, Saturday, at, as far as everything goes check-in wise, we'll usually do a higher day. <clears throat> and we've been doing more moderate high days, like 400 grams of carbs or whatever. And now we're doing a higher one today. I think just because we're much leaner, you know what I mean? Andrew can touch on like his his reasoning and all that kind of stuff after. <laughs> but yeah, everything's just been really, really a good groove. Um, this has been honestly one of the funnest preps I've ever had, which is amazing to say after this will be my 20th show. Wow. Um, so it's pretty amazing that I'm still having this much fun doing this stuff. And a lot of it, the fun that I'm having is because I feel like I made a lot of progress and I'm really happy with my physique and a lot, really happy with my improvements. So that obviously makes it a lot easier <clears throat> to enjoy the process as you're seeing your physique change. Like me and Andrew were talking about before is, you know, I'm very tired, but I'm also very excited. And it's almost a little bit of a high for me because my body's changing so fast and it's sort of very exciting. And it sort of gives you those endorphins to sort of, push through the rest of your prep right so i would yeah. say it's actually easier usually around this time frame than like for me the hardest part is like week five to like week three because you're really trying to get that last bit of body fat off but it doesn't come off so easily and then for at least this is how my preps go but then it sort of starts happening like around like week three three weeks out and then just really happens fast you know what i mean so it's like come on come on come on glutes like let's yeah. get there <laughs> nothing's really happening you know what i mean and then all of a sudden it's just just one morning you're a little bit drier and harder than the next the next day and it's more noticeable and then it just sort of starts rolling right so yeah it's been it's been a really great prep um you know and also it's been amazing because i've been able to train with andrew um the whole off season and then into prep which has been huge man because <clears throat> you know when you're four weeks out going to do your quad day or three weeks out you know, that's tough, tough stuff, man. Like you're walking in going to try to train your quads as hard as you can and you're on 125 grams of carbs <clears throat> and that like, you know, 5% body fat or whatever. Yeah. You know, you're not really feeling it and you get your stamina tape sort of dies off a little bit earlier in the, in the workouts, you know what I mean? So you sort of fade quicker now. Um, so having Andrew there has definitely been, been huge as far as off-season progression and just like retaining or even adding muscle in prep, who knows, but... I'm definitely feeling my best ever and my biggest ever, roundest ever, and just most complete. And my posing has been awesome too. That's the thing I really wanted to touch on. I sort of slacked in the past was just practicing my presentation. But now having Andrew there has been a really big help because we've been posing a lot and just um, just really in sync with each other this year. Obviously, being closer to each other has helped tremendously. So I'm just very uh, grateful for where I'm at, still be doing it and still be making progress and uh, just having a lot of fun, man. You know, it's great. It's cool, man. Yeah, you guys make a, a great team and it's such a change from the first time that we did an interview when you were, you know, living back in the Northeast, working at a restaurant on your feet for work, working hard physically all day long, still getting into the gym doing all the same things you're doing now for bodybuilding. Yet, you know, your life was very different. You had to deal with the cold all winter long. Now you're living down in Florida, hanging out with your coach and best buddy. It's uh, right. it, it, it's pretty cool, man. I, I love seeing that evolution. I know our audience does too. Andrew, what are, what are some of your thoughts on this particular prep in comparison yep. to other diets that you guys have done? Um, so first what I wanted to touch on um, because this will apply to like everybody that, you know, as you go through career changes, you know, cause like, you know, Nate brought up how, man, my carbs used to be higher when I would diet and I was 20 pounds lighter. But as you just pointed out, Scott, what was he doing for work? He was on his feet yeah. running restaurants, like managing people. And I think, you know, 
only in the last couple of years have we really put an emphasis on NEAT, your non-exercise activity yes. thermogenesis. It's a big thing because, I mean, all of us here now, we sit on our asses most of the day compared to earlier times in our years where, Scott, you were, you know, delivering soda and Skip, I can't remember what you did, but you had a day job where you were on your feet for a while. Nate was in the restaurant and I was personal training people, you know, eight to 12 clients a day. There's just so many calories that are burned when you're doing that. Because I can recall like my, one of my preps in 2014, I did, I think, a total of six cardio sessions that whole prep in the last two weeks, just like, you know, three sessions one one week, three sessions the next week, just to yeah. get the fat off. That was it, you know? Yeah. Whereas, my like, dog. you know, 20. I walked my dog, maybe, you know? Well, it's funny because that was the, in 2016, Nate's first prep, I'm like, okay, I want you to take your dog for a 15-minute walk three times this week. <laughs> and then I think the peak of it was like, like a 30-minute walk, you know, every day or something like that because he was already getting so many steps in, you know? Yeah. Whereas... You know, all of us today, I, I can think back towards my last prep. It was like two hours of cardio, you know, <laughs> at six weeks out until about a week out was like standard, you know. So so anyone that's, you know, you know, listening there, doing their preps. And, and I even said this to Nate like two weeks ago. I'm like, you know, I explained the neat thing. I'm like, find every reason to get off your chair and go outside. Take the dog for an extra walk. Like just clean your apartment. Like find ways to keep moving because then we can cut down on the amount of cardio that you're doing. Right. Yeah. Um, secondarily you know and, and he touched on this like it doesn't matter what you're eating it's, it matters how lean you are because yeah we're fi we're filling them up today you know 700 grams of carbs right but come tomorrow like by second third meal in during the day his stomach's going to be growling his energy is going to be right back empty again and you know and he also touched on you know the size of the refeed days has gotten larger and larger and i'm sure skip could you know touch on this in terms of relating it to his skip loads where week one you know you're not loading someone the same way that you're loading them 20 you know 20 weeks into this thing you know so you're starting with the or i should say what's necessary to elicit a response earlier on in the prep is not the same that's going to be needed later on later on you're going to be needed more fuel to add to the fire to really right. get that that um, fire stoked and burning yeah. and then lastly you know i just want to touch on the progress because you know i would say i mean it's obvious he's made progress every single year you know since since you know he started competing in the npc and ifbb i would argue that this and i said it the year before too but i would say this year has been his best you know um i think and, I, and i'm not attributing this to me being around i think it's it's really he's learned how to not only like train appropriately for his exact physique but uh channel his recovery Put this put the time and energy into um, rest and um, uh, recovery modalities whether it's chiropractic uh, massage all those different things knowing how to channel those things to continue to bring out his best yeah um what was the last thing oh the last thing i was going to say is we absolutely as he said we've been doing a shit ton of posing um you know we started at like 15 weeks out you know doing three sessions a week doing two rounds and yeah. then at like you know 11 weeks out we bumped it to three rounds and and then now it's like three four days a week where you know after almost every up or pretty much every upper body day and some lower bodies days we're doing somewhere between two and four rounds of posing continuously uh because i the big goal for me this year was to make sure that he presents his physique the best way he possibly can, whether it's uh, holding the mandatories better, keeping the abs in a little bit, uh, holding them in a little bit better, transitioning, you know, because, and I think this kind of hit home when I said this to him was like, look, you're doing a bodybuilding show, but you are the show. Like people are paying to come and see you. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's, so you guys, you 10, 15 guys that are on stage, you are the entertainment. So really you need to be the entertainer. And I think that's gone a long way. I think that message hit home because if you look at his posing this year and compared to last year, I think you're going to say like, oh, wow, like he's definitely leveled his game up big time in terms of the posing department. That's cool. That's cool. What do you think, Skip? Well, wouldn't the recovery, because he's recovering better and you talked about the recovery modalities and things like that, that's contributing to better sleep, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. a lot of that, and, and, and this shouldn't be overlooked because most people tend to drive themselves into the ground during a prep. And I know I've done it <laughs> a lot of people. It's difficult to pull back when, when the brain is thinking work ethic, work ethic. If I work harder, it's going to yeah. pay off. And that's not necessarily the case. There's a cutoff. Clearly, mm -hmm. you have to work hard. But balancing that, it's... I, Honestly, I think that successful preps are mastering the balance between work and recovery. And once you can get that, 
I think from that point on, preps become a lot easier. And that's, mm-hmm. you know, you're a veteran. You're, you're, you competed in 20 shows. And you're, you're to that point, you probably were before the 20th show too, but you're moving towards that, toward that point where that balance is almost intrinsic. It's, it's, it co- kind of is going to come naturally. And it's, it's, it's a great place to be in. And, and it's also a great place to be in when you're a trainer, because when you have that client, we don't see a lot of the guys that we're training while they're in the gym. We don't know to what degree they're going crazy until all of a sudden they're like, yeah, I can't come out of the hole with 225. You know, I get six reps and my glutes shut down. Then it's like, yeah. uh, that's a little late to let me know that. <laughs> well, actually, let's touch on that because I think this is a good, you know, for a lot of guys that are doing their first couple preps, like, because you said there's that cutoff, right? Where, because we always like to say, oh, the training that, that built everything is the training that's going to get you to the finish line and bring you is what you should be doing on stage, right? And I And I agree with that. But to that cutoff point, like you're like you kind of said, Skip. So, like, what kind of variables would you guys say that people should be looking for, and manipulating as you know they get to that four, three, two weeks out point? I don't like the high intensity techniques. I don't like pushing. To I mean, are we gaining muscle at that point? Hmm. Essentially, I'd rather approach it as a maintaining it and not overtraining making sure that you're recovering, still training hard because you train, I mean, what's the difference? You train your ass off or you train almost kind of easy. Like if someone is seeing you, like I don't want to do videos of of sets <laughs> if yeah. I'm close to sure because I don't want somebody to go, oh, he doesn't train that hard. But yeah. I'm training smart, not right. only not only for recovery, but also for the injury component as well. The vulnerability for injury is incredibly high when – you know, your estrogen is real low, your hormones are all out of whack. It's just, it's a, it's an accident waiting to happen. You already have aches and pains. You already have tweaks here and there that you're going, yeah, I got to be careful with this. To that point, uh, Skip, the other day we were on the uh, Watson, uh, we, we were doing hams, hams and then uh, finishing up with quads and we did some leg extensions and, you know, obviously those are getting pretty hard for him. Uh, but then we go on to the Watson hack squat, which we told you guys, like, you know, you can adjust that thing. So it's, it's a pretty high incline. And like when we did our main working set on that, like every like other rep, it was like snap crackle pop and i'm like Yo, yeah. you okay like are we good yeah. and, and i knew he was fine because he didn't make any faces but i just kind of want to acknowledge like hey i'm hearing things that i don't normally hear when you do this exercise so yeah. let's make sure we we, we kind of cap it right here with the weight that we're using you know versus the other approach which is ah, i'll wrap tighter i'll turn up my music <laughs> yeah i'm pushing i'm pushing through yeah. yeah there's something to be said of that but on the other hand you push through. I know I've pushed. We've all pushed through and went, yeah, that was a really bad idea. <laughs> hey, let me yeah. point something out to the audience really quick, too. For those of you who watch all the shows, the, you guys have seen the episodes that Kuba and I have been doing. Uh, notice this. Kuba said something similar to what Skip had just said. He said, I don't like I don't like the intensity techniques. If I can try to, if I, if I keep doing, if I keep trying, Skip, I can do a good imitation of you, but I have to like, <laughs> I have to work my way into it. And Victoria was floored one day. It was like after Swiss when we hung out all weekend and I like, we're driving home and I was like doing an imitation. She was like, that's pretty good. I'll have to work on it. I have to work on it more before I can do it in front of you. But, uh, but yeah, Kuba said that, you know, he's not a fan of like, you get rid of things like the rest pauses, the drop sets mm-hmm. and You know, with the programming, one of the things I enjoy is that we have a lot of different perspectives from a lot of people that I trust to educate you guys. And one of the things you'll see is you'll start hearing the same message coming in slightly different ways from different people. And that's exactly what Kuba had said before. And I'm with you 100 percent, Skip. Um, What do you guys think about volume overall going into a show? Is there any point where you would pull that volume back in any way pull it like one of the things kuba said was when he's starting to feel more fatigued he wants to stay strong in his key lifts which is something i agree with you know Mm -hmm. i I would rather try to stay strong and say a a, a chest pressing movement than you know a a lateral raise or a tricep extension and then if i were to give way anywhere it would be in the smaller accessory areas or you know an isolation movement and trying to maintain as much strength as i can in those movements where I'm going to be able to move the most, like, you know, a chest press, uh, a a row movement, a compound leg movement, things like that. 
So, so for me, with my clients, I actually like to, usually around three weeks out, I'll definitely pull back some working sets, like maybe like one or two working sets out. And then I give them a time frame of, okay, I want you in and out of the gym within an hour. So they're not sort of dicking around. They're not like taking two hours to get a workout in, you know what I mean? That kind of stuff. And it, sometimes just having that, it makes it a little bit easier for them to follow. You know what I mean? Like, okay, in and out of the gym in an hour. Cause you know, a lot of guys, they sort of start dragging a little bit, you know what I mean? So they're sort of like off in no, no land. And like, next thing you know, like they're in the gym for two hours where, you know, you sort of want to get back home and recover and, you know, that three week out mark is when it's sort of like crucial. And to touch on before what you guys were talking about, that's the biggest thing I find is <clears throat> a lot of newer guys run into issues um, is let's add more stuff, right? So a lot of guys, they actually get closer and they do the opposite and they say, oh man, my arms aren't as big as I thought they were. I'm going to start doing some more arms. I'm going to start, you know, adding this in to like compensate with that. But at the end of the day, that, that's only going to dig yourself more of a recovery hole. <clears throat> and also, you're, like Skip said, you're not going to add muscle at that point, right? So it's more of a mental thing of these. It's a, it's a mental back and forth battle of, oh man, I got to do more. I need this. I need that. But sometimes it's like, well, you're going to have to wait till next year to like, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I mean, at the end of the day, what's the goal? You want to bring a fresh physique to the stage. You don't want to bring a weathered, I barely crossed the finish line. Right. I just got out of the gym looking physique. You want to bring a full round, dry, fresh muscle, you know, a relaxed, recovered muscle looking physique to the stage. So, you know, like Nate's saying, like adding in extra arm volume or I'm going to start doing drop sets when I haven't done them all prep or I'm going to do these giant sets that I've never done before and try to do squats and then leg press and then walking lunges or whatever it might be. Yeah, now is not the time to do that stuff. Um, but, but talking about the pulling back in volume, I, I, I can parallel with what Kuba was saying in terms of like, let's say you're doing a hack squat just because it's on my mind. If you were doing, say, like two or three working sets on there, I think pulling it back to like one or two and maybe even just that one still trying to hit your normal or you know some decent working weight and emptying the tank on that versus trying to stretch it out to like two or three working sets in various rep ranges i think like that's a good example of of how to appropriately pull your volume back or even pulling a little bit back on your um, warm-up reps you know like hmm. if you're someone that are always done like sets of eight or sets of ten oh, warming yeah. up to your top working set well you know at some point you know you do four or five reps on something, you know if like your body's warming up to it and if it's okay to do that day, right? So I don't think you need to do on your third warm up set ten reps or twelve reps before you're going to jump into your top working set. Maybe cut it back to like you know four reps or five reps, and that's something me and Nate do all the time. Is as we get up yeah. to that top working set, we're going to pull that volume back on those warm ups. You know, the idea is just to make sure the body and the brain are acclimated to the weights you're going to be using. I gotta I'm okay guys. for. Go ahead, Go Scott. Ahead. I was going to change the topic. I had a fun fun topic I wanted to ask you about. Go for it. Well, I, just let me throw this in here. I'm yeah. okay with pulling. I'm okay with increasing volume a little bit if you're willing to pull the intensity back. I'm okay with that. But if you're – I'm an intensity guy first. Everybody kind of approaches their training their own specific way. I don't like to gauge – I want the intensity to stay as – constant or as stable as possible that way i only really have to control frequency and volume but when it does get closer and i'm more depleted i do like to pull back because i almost feel like there's a there's that risk of you ever doing a set and you just feel like you're touching on the joints crackling and popping almost like you know what my quad tendons could go at any point and they're probably not going to but they hurt that bad so then pulling back the intensity increasing volume to increase the blood flow i'm okay with that but you have yeah. to give up one or the other yeah because if you're just going to keep the intensity high and you're going to push volume you, it, it, like nate said you're just digging yourself a hole and then good luck trying to fill out <laughs> so i just want to touch on real quick scott but that made me think is um oh man now i'm like getting my two and a half weeks up brain but uh <laughs> No, I was. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh man, it was actually, actually pretty good too. Perfect. This is a perfect place so people this see happens. what happens. This happens, guys. 
Yeah, exactly. And you'll get it in like two minutes. You'll be like, damn, yeah. that's what I was going to say. Either that or you'll forget to like we're off the air. Either yeah, one of the two. Right. Yeah. We're, I don't even know. Whatever. Let's we'll move on. <laughs> All right. I had, I had a fun question for you. Hey, what's up, guys? I have a lot of people who reach out to me on a regular basis who are trying to more effectively reach their goals. One of the biggest mistakes I see people make is that they're not getting enough protein. And there's only so much chicken breast we can eat through the day, but we can easily add a high quality protein supplement to boost those numbers up. True Nutrition has just about every protein powder you can think of from high quality weight isolate. If you don't tolerate lactose, then you could use their beef isolate or you could use their pea protein isolate if you don't eat animal products. They literally have everything you'd think of. I've believed in them for like a decade before they advertised with us and they they never went out of their way to say like, hey, we want to promote our stuff through you. I literally asked them because it's a company that I believe in and at the end of the day, I want to see you guys reach your goals as effectively as possible. So if you use our code THINK at True Nutrition, you'll get some savings, you'll help to support our programming and you'll get some high quality products to more effectively reach your goals faster. Yeah, I've never been to MI40 gym. Um, and I mean, it's such a popular gym, right? It's such a cool gym. Derek trains there, right? And a bunch of other guys do South, you know, Florida gym. Everybody knows about it. And you guys, it's your it's your normal day to day place that you train at. Skip, have you been out there? You train at MI40? No. And technically, it's not South Florida. I stopped myself. I stopped myself. I, know, I was like, like uh, any more than West Palm. <laughs> West I'm Florida, not claiming West, West Palm is South Florida either. You got to get below West Palm and you got to get below Tampa. <laughs> okay. Before it's actually technically. Yeah, I I kind of stopped myself. I was like, <laughs> it's down there, you know, in the sun in Florida. <laughs> I haven't I haven't been there. Honestly, I haven't been to any gyms. In t- I haven't been to the powerhouse that uh, Doctor Stevenson, you know, Doctor Scott trains at. I haven't been to any gyms. He moved. There. He doesn't go there. Yeah, anymore. he doesn't live there anymore. Oh, yeah. is that right? Yeah. He's like way out in the boonies now. Oh yeah, I'm not surprised by that. No. Yeah. So, but what's it like? Like, who do you guys run into? I mean, I imagine the equipment's freaking awesome, but I consider that to be like a bodybuilder celebrity gym. Yeah, I like the fact that it's the bodybuilder gym. I think me and Nate will both agree that the celebrity side it gets a little annoying at Does times it? because it is a you know on any given day there's three or four tripods out and i know we've had this we've talked about this on on the show before about you know what it, i'll leave it at that that but for the overall like the bo- the people that go there day in day out are very respectful and you know they realize that you're there to work out too and and they're not going to be like yo you walking in front of my my my, my camera you know yeah. but there are sometimes days where there's like four people and it's like a beginning npc physique that's like videoing everything they're doing yeah. and it's like yo you're gonna have to pay a tax if you're gonna do that man like we need to double the double the day for you if, if, if you're gonna be in front of the mirror and in front of the camera but um you know we're talking about some of the people we had we just had um uh matt grego <clears throat> just won the new york pro recently he's he trains out of our gym um you know we've got a lot of like good figure ben, pros ben just won junior essays Oh, duh. Ben just won Junior USA's and nice. Classic won the overall. Um, coached by our buddy Phil Viz. I mean, so on any given day, like especially around like the show season times, like any you know random really good guys and girls will pop in there for a workout, uh, and, and the lighting's like really good. So uh, you know, there's there's special spots in the gym where people can really set some, take some really good photos and, and whatnot. It's cool. good, all good equipment too. Do they have like what what kind of stuff? What's your favorite stuff in there that they have? What do you think, Nate? Uh, I mean, they got a lot of prime. The, our favorite, we like the Watson stuff a lot. Like the Seal Row that we use, it's not a machine, yeah. but like Watson. Um, the hack squat that we love is Watson. Um, they have Dybex leg press and squat press, which is a classics, right? Like, um, But yeah, they have a lot of good prime back machines. But I was going to say, my favorite part about MI40 is that a lot of people like stop in like they're on vacation or they're yeah. they're traveling they want to see the gym so like last year i got to hang out with two guys from amsterdam that are both pros they were competing in the hurricane pro so we chilled all weekend um you know and just had a good time and so there's a lot of people coming and going like you know what i mean that you sort of run into that you don't usually see that often so it's pretty cool that way i mean like there's a lot of uh like you know uh mr beast oh yeah yeah he actually was there and stopped okay. in there one yeah, and then um, Lane Norton goes there. Oh, so, okay. Like, there's a bunch of like big name people for sure. And then that kid Tristan, um, you know the young kid who does yeah. PED stuff. Yeah, uh, he's been PED. Is he? 
the kid that's been bodybuilding since he was like 11. <laughs> oh, I don't know if that's him then. I or he's like, the he's small done videos with, um, he eats like uh, liver and shit. <laughs> you don't know Tristan, uh, the small little kid? No, this is someone else then. I was thinking of a Tristan guy who does. Are we talking about the, are you talking about the tiny education. Asian kid? Yeah. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. No, I, know I, like know, I know who you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even um, know him. So, so there's a lot of YouTube people that pop in there a lot yeah. Uh, yeah. for videos and, and whatnot. So the best part is, though, I'll say this, is, like, they have a limited membership. So yeah. when we go there, it looks busy, but, like, honestly, most of the time when we're there, it's, like, the same group of people that are there every day, you know, some guests here and there. But it's limited membership, and the regular membership is so expensive if you're not a pro that it sort of makes it, like, you know what I mean? It sort of guards, like, the... Uh, Keeps the clientele yeah. level. Well, I would say this. Premium. It is really rare that if we want to get on something that we don't immediately, we're not immediately able to get on it or we just wait like three minutes and we get the piece of equipment. It's like, okay. you know, when you go to like some of those gyms where they only have one good hack squad or one yeah. good Smith machine and you're like, oh shoot, now I got to wait 10 minutes and put my bag down so that I can get next on it. It's not really like that because I feel like, or, or the other thing is that there's other machines that are similar and also really good in quality that you're like, okay, I can replicate that movement I'm trying to do with something slightly different. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, they got a lot of. Good I'm stuff. hoping, I'm hoping that Raw ends up similar to that. Chris Bumstead's uh, should be opening officially opening any time. I think it's might be this week. But I, are you going to be there, Nate? What's that, Nate? I am. I am. Okay. I will I, be there actually. Okay. Why? May you ask? <laughs> uh, well, why is that, Nate? <laughs> no. no. So I, I did want to drop some uh, pretty big news for myself. Is. Uh, I'm actually a new sponsored athlete of Raw and Revive. So down in uh, Florida, um, obviously you guys know Seabum's company, Matt Jansen's company. Um, so very happy to uh, move forward with them. And uh, just they're giving me some a good opportunity. And uh, I'm already off to a really good start. And then their grand opening is this weekend in Port St. Lucie. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually going to be there over there a lot more too because my dad actually lives in Vero Beach, which is 30 minutes north. So it works out oh, really no good. <laughs> Right. Yeah, and my dad's actually not. He's he's doing okay, but he just sort of came across some stuff where he doesn't really have this, a caregiver. So I'll probably be over there a lot more after my show. So I'll probably be able to train at that gym like pretty my regular gym. So it won't be thirty minutes away. So it'll be pretty pretty fun. Um, and there's a lot You're of other make guys. A brunch over. date or what? Nate, Nate, and Skip. Uh, yeah, yeah. Have a, have a brunch yeah. date. All right. Fair enough. Dude. No, not right away, but <laughs> soon I'll get, we'll get on some video too. You know, oh, yeah. you, you need that for your channel. You guys can both put it on your own channels. Do your own Absolutely. videos. Yeah, I saw cool. Skip had his stuff out. He's got his new channel out, oh, yeah. and we'll have to talk about that. I saw, I saw this, which I I heard the announcement because I saw this video. Look at that face that they picked for the <laughs> thumbnail too. <laughs> it's classic, right there. <laughs> yeah, what you don't see is what's going on uh, from the waist down. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> Wait, what kind of gym is it? <laughs> that was cool though. I watched that yesterday. You guys trained some back, and yeah. uh, and and you made your announcement on your YouTube channel. Do you, by the yeah. way, like since we're shilling now, let's completely we'll take it all the way. Do you have a code for for revive and raw and stuff? Yes, it's uh so it's nasty Nate. And for those that, that don't know or who have lived under rock. Revive is amazing because they're just a health supplement line. So for those that don't know, they have a lot of amazing gut products that I love. They have a lot of good female hormonal products that are really big and I use with a lot of my clients. And then obviously the health supplement side of just using PEDs, they have a lot of that stuff that covers all that ground. And um, so I'm really stoked about the Revive part mainly because just it's stuff that you use every day. It's there's a lot of good stuff, you know what I mean. So it's uh, and they have a lot of good like cortisol products too and so just a whole bunch of uh, good good line overall as far as like essentials and hard to find products in one uh, line per se. Yeah, so, yeah. It's a good functional so, line. Yeah. yeah. So uh, with with your you you guys talked about your um, the development that Nate has made this in it, it you know just kind of moving back to that video I watched that whole back video yesterday great video by the way you guys should go check that out uh, I. I thought that like some of the things you were doing, some of your back training technique, 
it looked different than the videos I've seen you do, we'll say like two, three years ago. Like I can see an evolution in your training. And Andrew had mentioned that as well. He said like, you know, you, you, you understand what your body needs more now than ever. Um, if you were to sum it up for us, give us like the elevator pitch, what have you learned that your body needs to get the most out of your development, say in this past season? Um, well, just speaking off back training real quick, just as we were just talking about it, is this actually a year, this whole year was the first time I've ever trained back all machines pretty much. Um, so as before, I was a really big uh, opponent of, um, you know, barbells and dumbbells for my back training and just keeping really good form. And uh, so this year, just obviously being at MI40 as well and having a lot of, you know, nice options as far as back equipment, um, I started, so we just started doing more like, more uh, fixed position back stuff where I can just really concentrate on just the hard contractions and targeting the muscle that I want to. And I'll give uh, Hunter Labrada some credit because I was watching a lot of his videos and he brought his back double bicep up pretty, pretty well over the past couple of years. And, you know, he sort of does the same thing as far as sort of sticking to machines. And I will say that was an evolution, a proper one, because I'm a, I, I still think if I went back, I wouldn't change anything. I would still do the barbells and the, and the T-bars and the one-arm dumbbell rows, very strict and all that kind of stuff. Because I do think it built that base of density. So, like, my lower back has always sort of looked like that. I've always had very thick erectors and thick back meat in certain areas that was from that. So, it's been beneficial that way. But to sort of sum it up, <clears throat> my critique has always sort of been my back doubles up and down sort of straight up and down so this year we really wanted to build some shape to it and get a little bit more of that taper from the back double like Derek Lunsford has perfectly obviously for example um so whereas that the machine stuff really helped and a lot of those cues and tips that were in my YouTube video that you saw you know that was a huge benefit as far as like widening my back and filling in the areas that sort of weren't filled in like another thing too is I we were trying to bring up my mid traps which I think we did a really good job doing and we were actually did some good stuff as far as back training that I would do is so like when I start maybe a prime row I will sort of engage my traps first oh really and then row does that make sense yeah yeah and that's been a huge uh, help as far as bringing up the center of the trap which is obviously fills in that middle back double bicep quite well and uh, for me, I've always looked at like a Dennis Wolf or a Justin Compton, how they have that round 3D mid trap on their back doubles, even like a Martin Fitzwater. Who I was just, just thinking of Martin <laughs> in that New York pro shot. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So trying to sort of fill that in and get it to pop a little bit more. So because before, in my opinion, like when I was doing the barbell rows or the T-bar rows, it's very hard to get that contraction in that right. mid trap, right? So you yeah. sort of get stuck. So by doing this, you're already sort of getting that contraction going and then bringing it back. And I think that helped out a lot. But, I think a lot of people miss the retraction part through the yeah. rhomboids, through the middle trap. And I think, look, if you look at the size during a lat spread of just, just total like space taking up area on the back, so middle traps are big. They're big. So if yeah. you're not getting protraction, protraction and retraction, and you're just rowing and you're rowing big, you could have great lats, terries, everything else. I mean, those that that's a lot of meat there in yeah. between those shoulder blades. And without retraction and protraction, you're not getting as much work. There. And a lot of people row that way. A yeah. lot of people row that way where you do not see the shoulder blades come in and there's not as much of a range of motion with the scapula as there should be. It's a great cue. Excellent cue. Yeah. Well, um, also that the, um, you know, we're touching on the range of motion and I think a lot of these machines allow you to get a greater range of motion than say a barbell row, right? Cause your barbell row, mm. you stop at the waist, right? Yeah. Whereas, you know, I, I'm thinking on the top of my head, I think we let off with the Nautilus um, pull down, single arm pull down there. I mean, there's not another row where you can get your elbow back as far as you can with that exercise. You well, know? Especially one arm at a time. It, yeah, exactly. And, and yeah. the way you can shift your body weight to even enhance that even more mm -hmm. to almost like curl your elbow around. Yeah. It's oh, like yeah. the contraction is unreal compared to, uh, I, I would say the contraction is like double, triple 
from what you get on like a standard lap pull down, if you right. ask me, you know, yeah. and, and we treat the lap pull down for basically for the Terry's now, you know, for the most part, yeah. whereas, you know, we're really using that, um, that Nautilus for, uh, single arm for, for the lats. But I just think, you know, with the, the, some of the availability of equipment we've had this year, just being able to get that little extra range of motion and not maybe something you would do when you're younger in terms of having weight and seeing five more pounds on the bar, 10 more pounds on the bar, uh, be your driver for success, but really, really going after the feel as your driver for success, the contraction and, and how hard you're really getting that muscle to rock during the actual movement versus just getting married to, okay, you know, I'm progressively overloading X amount of weight over time. Yeah. Right. What's this pick, Nick? Uh, so I actually just sent you that just to show you that. See the taper now? I didn't really have that last year, so yeah. I'm really happy about it the wings are coming out in that back double it's very and for those that are really you know well versed in the sport they know how hard it is to do that to your back double if you don't if you don't have the taper and, and it's sort of straight up and down it can be very hard to fill that out because a lot of guys if you're genetically sort of up and down from the back like on that especially on the back double mainly then it's yeah. really hard to to pop like that like the front does you know what i'm saying yeah so i'm really proud of that part yeah I've struggled we, we, with that myself. You just got to lean back further. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then um, just with the training too, the leg, I mean, obviously I've gotten the most notoriety for bringing up my quads, right? So oh, yeah. where is Andrew's witness and we have training people, like come, sometimes people will jump in with us training wise and they'll see me on the leg press and obviously I'm, you know, 250 pounds. Like my range of motion is like almost just about perfect. And every time someone's like, oh, wow, that's crazy. He can get that deep. But, it's something that I practiced because I was really humbled when I couldn't really get my legs to progress anymore. And I had to go back to the drawing board and say, hmm, I need to figure something out because my legs are not growing the way they need to as far as like everything else. So range of motion has been huge as far as like getting those, uh, getting those um, knee flexion as deep as you can. And, uh, you know, getting that for me, it gets that really good stretch on the outer sweep. And then it really gets like really a lot of blood in there. So that's sort of how I get the outer sweep targeted. And for me, I don't even do like close stance um, toes straight forward. I do a lot more duck foot stuff um, just because it allows me to get that range of motion better. I'd rather opt for better range of motion <clears throat> than like toes straight or, mm. or more knee flexion. If I can get as deep as I can for me, that's always going to be going to be the answer as far as bring, bring up my quads and, um, and the VMOs came up a lot as well. So it's been, it's been a really good but the range of motion like i said the constant tension like i posted a video on my instagram doing five and a half plates on the arsenal pendulum and that was a super hard set at like five weeks out but you watch the video my my tension and rep my range of motion is very deep and my constant and the tension is constant there's not a lockout you know what i mean each rep looks just like the same as far as like first to last and that was even with my heaviest set, is what I'm saying. You know what I mean? So I didn't compromise any of those things as the as the weight got heavier, right? <clears throat> you, you guys got to see his leg press. It's like I, I'm blown away almost every week when we see it. And also the other thing is like you know years ago we'd be throwing 12, 13, 14 plates aside on mm -hmm. on a sidebacks leg press, you know, and, and that had its time, you know, it definitely in terms of intensity and, and you know, but. Um, but I, I it, like it still blows my mind how deep he can get. And I think if people looked at the weight, they'd be like, "Oh, those guys aren't that strong," you know. Like they're only what maxing out around eight plates on a, on a sidebex leg press. But you know, and I also think back to uh, I think we all watched when we had Nick on the show. Nick had a set where he just put four plates aside on the leg press for like a yeah. set of 20 and his depth was crazy. We're talking like that kind of depth, even a little bit more, I think, uh, with Nate. Uh, it's not something everyone can do because of their it's something they got to definitely um they definitely got to like work into it and work the mobility in the hips to be able to do that kind of stuff yeah um, yeah but yeah are we looking for the uh, yeah here yeah, we go i found one of his leg workouts oh, here and his oh do the um yeah do the uh pendulum squat this i think go back a little yeah, bit for the pendulum like right in the middle go to the right, middle right about let's see there we go you're good right yep. there so we're warming up there so go a little bit further all right See, there's a, we got Andrew here. Is that Andrew? Yep, we got Andrew on yeah. here. Yeah. But I did remember a little bit what I was going to say real quick was just stretching 
has been huge as well because and when we were talking about the recovery hole you know yeah. now that someone is under six eight weeks out you got to assume their cardio is probably over an hour whereas before that wasn't the case right so there's another component of recovery being tapped into and then also the sleep so if your sleep isn't good and you're doing more cardio now your double recovery is tapped into so when you're going into that training session you got to be sort of mindful of that stuff too and you got to keep those so i get my work my calves worked on my hamstrings worked on to keep everything loose because you know how tight that shit gets from like all the cardio right oh, yeah. so for me like if i don't get that stuff worked on constantly then it's just gonna it's, and it's gonna inhibit my training as well right right how many reps it depends on the type of here? cardio you're doing we got like 19 or 20 on this one i, I lost weeks. count we got to like yeah. a dozen and i just stopped counting yeah just that was kept a, going that was a, that was a brutal yeah we did a heavier one with like five and a half plates for like I don't know I think oh, it was like yeah here we go this is it look at the depth of it. here we go look at the depth still nice controlled negative now, like just touch the top you're not you know you yep. keep those reps constant yep yeah but I think the biggest thing that grew my legs as well was just not being so concerned about the uh, the load right but more about the reps how can I make it harder how can I make mm -hmm. it um, maybe higher rep range you know what i mean that kind of stuff so so for some of you guys at home that doesn't mean that you need to just use five and a half plates right. on the uh <laughs> on the pendulum that might literally mean you're using one you know what i mean depending on what your mm -hmm. level is and that's okay there's another one of my clients ryan sullivan he's getting ready for junior nationals so that's oh, the cool thing it. is we have we have a really good community of um you know people down here yeah. that are I was going to say in their prime. These guys are in their prime. I'm, I'm, I'm past. I'm, I'm, I'm spoiled. <laughs> but like, you know, these guys are in the prime, and it's, it's, it's nice. I, if I, I would do anything to shave like seven years off my life, or you know, to go backwards seven years and be with these guys with in the, right. in, the in the tank of it right now. Oh, yeah. um, but it is, uh, it is fun to watch because we just have like a really good community. You know, Ryan jumps in as often as he can. He's got a little different work schedule, um, and like. Sure. You know, Nate mentioned our buddy John Ballard. He's a guy who went who turned pro in men's physique, won the overall at the universe a couple of years ago, and he's making his big jump into classic physique. Um, his debut's coming up in about fifteen or eighteen weeks. So it's just like a lot of guys really pushing forward, doing That's all cool. the right things, sharing information, helping each other out. Um, so it's, it's, you know, that, that, that's the cool part about this gym, you know, on any given day, you know, you'll have three or four guys pushing really hard on legs and just like, you know, someone will stop and go over and help spot the other person. You're like, come on, you, know, you got four more. Let's go. You're not done. Yeah. But, but yeah that's a throwback leg press right there. Yes. Which one is yeah. this? A Cybex or is this Icarian? It's a Cybex. Cybex? It's a Cybex. Yeah. That's the Dorian. <laughs> yeah. The yep. Icarian has the split platform. The bent platform, we put, I guess you could say. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah when you said we, split, we I thought the, you meant like unilateral, but I know exactly no. what you oh. mean, bent the other direction, yeah. where you don't know where to put your feet because you want exactly. to put it Exactly, you want to put the it bench. right there on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> right? You're like, that's right. a really bad placement for a bend right there. You guys that's want to see a crazy say. Uh, <laughs> leg press. We don't show in the video, but there's a, a the Watson leg press. Have you guys seen that one? I huh. can't remember offhand. <laughs> Even without any weight on it, it feels like a four plate like pressure, maybe even a little heavier actually. Yeah. But it, it has the ability of doing unilateral um, as well. Look at that range. Look at that range there. All the and I even I didn't even catch it all the way. Yeah, well, that's, that's that important to know. Check too. that the hips the hips are not rolling. They're not rolling posterior. So that's crucial because people can go deep like that, but if their hips are turning yeah. posterior, it's an accident waiting to happen on that yeah. lower back. So you have to have that mobility. You have to have that flexibility through the glutes and the hamstrings or you're going to have problems. We should also point out, though, like even when you're doing it right and you have this range of motion, every now and then, like, you know, you will run into like those, like where your hips roll just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I know it happened to Nate once, I think – right before we started prep in the off season, he had a good one and I've had a good one a few times, not nothing that's like debilitating, but, but I, we've all, you know, had injuries on the leg press where you're like, Oh man, am I even going to be able to do this ever again? And it's mm, fine yeah. in two weeks, but it's like in the moment you're like, I can't even sit in the chair comfortably. I can't bend over to tie my shoes. Yeah. It's really painful. Right. Yeah. Like a piston. No, solid.
Yeah, but I'll tell you, I see some people, they do this leg press, and they only got, like, 90 degrees, and, yeah, of course, you can do, like, 10 or 12 plates a side, you know what I mean? So, yeah. But yeah. start going that much deeper, it makes it a lot humble, more humbling and harder, right? Well, nice even also, home. like, they'll put the um, the seat pad up, so it automatically shortens your range of motion. Sure. You can oh, get before, yeah. your hips, before your hips get a little rebound off of your gut. Yeah. And um, this, like, it allows you to kind of open up so your knees go outside of your hips a little bit. Yeah, so yeah. So you're getting that a little extra inch or two um, in that range of motion. So, yeah. And an inch or two can make all the difference. That's, that is yeah, what your wife said, buddy. That is what that is what Mrs. Gibson. She does said. say that. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for somebody to, to have a follow up there. She's like, God, <laughs> just another inch, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> That's a nice set there, Andrew. Oh, thank you. Oh, he's still got it. Those <laughs> are <laughs> some long legs, too. Yeah, there's a long distance for that to travel. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I tell this, twelve I, feet every yeah. run. <laughs> I, I tell people this story because uh, any you guys know uh, my buddy Justin Randall, who's like he's like five foot. Yeah, four, we got to get him on. Yeah, we do. But but we were doing like uh, hack squats one time, and like I'm like watching my range of motion, and then I'm watching his range of motion, and and, and I'm not talking shit because he trains fucking brutally hard, and he, he's got massive legs. But I'm just like, oh, like he bottoms out when I have like three times the journey to go, and I call it a journey compared to what some of the shorter guys have to do. Yeah, yeah. You can just strap like a Zumba step to the platform right. for him. Yeah. <laughs> bungee cord or something well now we're seeing you know people are being smart about putting the pads like on a hack squat like underneath the where the pad where the pad comes out over their shoulders yeah to give them that or they're stacking pads up on the on the platform so they can get deeper and get more range of motion out of it mm -hmm. yeah so like we did a little drop set here i never thought about that putting a pad on the platform i don't like the idea on a hack because the You're angle, afraid it's going to slip, or it can. It, it. I've seen some uh, nasty. At least if it's on your shoulders, it's less likely to move. Okay. Check out um Michaela Acock's um training video. She's really good about her range of motion, especially on the hacks and whatnot. And um, she uses. I've seen her do both with pads up on the shoulders and pads on the ground. Um, and we're talking like the thick, I guess horse horse barn mats. Not not oh, like these. Like yeah, that's not going yeah, not anywhere. these. Not these squishy gotcha. little ones. We're talking like um, real thick, hardcore. That mat the same mat you put pounds. on the floor. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like a 40, 50 pound mat. Yep. Gotcha. He's got the shakes. He's like, like you're turning one way, then the other. Oh, it doesn't feel good this way. It doesn't feel good that way. You Except guys for our audio about? listeners, we're watching, we're watching some neat videos and Andrew training here. <clears throat> for our audio people yep. who are just listening to silence right now. <laughs> <laughs> sorry guys you guys you guys know what i'm talking about though like when you're in the middle of a set like this for legs and like you're doing a drop set or you're doing something like this where like you rack it for a second and you're like you're trying to flail every different direction like oh does it yeah. feel better if i turn this way do i yeah turn? nope yeah. i'm gonna turn the other way it feels even worse like mm -hmm. and i, I know that get point up where it feels it feels better during the set than it does yes in between. yes it's like you'd rather yes. just stay in the set and I know that feeling when you finish a set and you have to get up and just walk away real fast when it's over. Yeah. <laughs> you got Leave some lunges in here or something? What was this at the end? Doing some walking lunges? I believe yes. This is what they we were so, so pride that, at that point. <laughs> that yeah, was no, no way it was play. needed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was Ryan. I think sometimes, like, I like that side by you, when side. you're when you're doing like your regular stuff with the person you train with, you forget, I guess, maybe how hard it is for other people. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. and it's not like we did; we only did like four exercises, I think. But like, you know, you guys know what I'm saying? Like, it's like when you have someone join you and you forget, like, oh, this is just our regular. It's like I know, was saying with take. training with Shelby. That was like you know what we did every yes. week, but someone come out of town and they'd be smoked. Yep, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yep, legs are looking full there. <laughs> no veins left. Yeah, that's a good yeah. workout, man. Let's see if I can bring us back yeah, over cool. here. All right. That is cool. So two and a half weeks, man. Two and a half weeks. Yep. What's Everything gonna happen between now and then, guys? 
uh-oh, he's going to just get a little bit sharper. You know, we don't need – all the fat's off his upper body. We just need a tiny little bit more to get off the glutes and a little bit of that inner adductor hamstring tie-in area. And, I, and you know, I so I kind of pr- propositioned him today of like, hey, you know – and here's actually a coaching key, right? Because when you know the athlete so well and when you're friends with them and you're training together and all that stuff. So the, the, I almost gave him a choice, but I really didn't give a choice. I wanted to see where his mindset was leaning, right? So I said today when he checked in, well, we option A is we could do a refeed today and we still have plenty of time to, to get that last bit off. Or we could push one more day today and see if that seals the deal and then refeed tomorrow and start maybe adding calories back up the back end. Mm-hmm. And I really kind of propositioned that way because I just want to see where his mindset was. Like, like I know he's not going to jump at food just because he has an appetite for one food. Like, does his body really need the food and will he benefit from it to be able to have the push for the next two to three days after this to get that last bit off, right? Yeah. And, and his answer was like, you know, yeah, you know what, let's eat today because I know we have plenty of time. And in my mind, okay, great. I'm totally okay with that. Mm-hmm. So when I tell people like, yeah, I coach Nate, but I, I really do view it as a partnership because I trust his insight, his answers, and that he's not the type that's going to jump at food or a free meal or refeed just because he wants to satisfy his hunger. Right. It's right. more so the thought process. And I think when you work with upper level people and you work with upper level people for so long in that relationship, you have that trust. Whereas you know, like a first timer, you give some a first timer the option of more food, they're going to jump at that and not even hear the other option, right? Sure, like they, yeah. it's, it's just a given, you just know it. So mm-hmm. I think this is a good teaching point for people to maybe, I would say, work with more advanced people and have developed a relationship with them. This might be a tool that you can use. Yeah, I do that Great. too, even with somebody, maybe I don't know them well, but they are more advanced. I'll turn yeah. to them yeah. for their, you know what I mean? The way I put it too is like, as a coach, it would be foolish of me to not like, respect the level of insight you've had about your own body because you've lived in it through your entire bodybuilding career i'm just yeah. jumping in you know yeah true yeah and to make those decisions without feedback i think is i don't know i don't think it's the mark of a very good coach you do have to i admit with the people who are not seasoned and they're mm-hmm. not experienced you do have to just kind of rule in a totalitarian sort of matter of fact this is what it is Mm -hmm. And I'll I'll even add this because I think it's important. The client doesn't get to dictate whether you respect their knowledge and their experience. You have to (laughs) dictate whether you respect their knowledge and experience. Come across too many, uh, not a ton, but enough clients who so badly want to impress me with what they know and convince me that they're so knowledgeable and they're Mm -hmm. so in tune and we should be doing this and we should be doing that. And the answer is usually then you should have saved your money and you should be prepping yourself. And and unfortunately it has to come to that a couple with some great guys, but that's what it comes to. And then they're slack jawed because you are not working with them anymore, but there's, there's no reason to, you have all the answers. You're fighting the system. And I don't have that mutual respect for your knowledge and your experience that you do. You have a grandiose mm-hmm. idea of what it is that you think you know and and your experience. Mm-hmm. And well, I'm sure they walk away going, so do you, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't call you for right. your money. Yep. I didn't call you to work with you. You called me to work with me. So there's yeah. that. Can we take a minute to appreciate Skip's awesome lighting, his new lighting setup? (laughs) You look like you're in a movie now. You look like you're in a movie or something, doesn't he? All right. Yeah, this could be like professional documentary and stuff that you got set up. (laughs) The only thing I did notice was without the hat, I do get even better. It it gets to be better lighting. I have a shadow. Oh, you do. You've got that shadow. And it does change the background a little bit because of that shadow. Hmm. But I got to wear a hat. Got to wear a hat. You'll rarely, if ever, see me without a hat. All right. Rarely. Oh, you got a word of the day for us? I do. <laughs> and I almost forgot it, so I got to pull it up. Ah, insular. Ooh. Yeah. yeah you guys familiar with it? Insular? I-N-S-U-L-A-R. And it's basically, uh, oh, by definition, because I'm going to, I don't want to screw it up because it's, it. And when I read the definition, you'll be like, oh, there's a couple words that could also mean the same thing. Uh, or they're very, very close. It's ignorant or un- uninterested in cultures, ideas, or people's people's outside one's own experience. So 
it's basically like if you don't have any respect or knowledge for anyone else's culture and you don't care to it could be uh, i mean it's not necessarily narcissistic but you you're apathetic because you don't care about other cultures or other interests you're just kind of i don't know in, in you're only focused on yourself and what pertains to you and you know what as a society we do that quite frankly yeah. we're not as in tune with other some some legit some not but you know with other cultures and and respect of other cultures and that can be that can qualify you as being insular i, I say insular negative. with more of a why in there but you don't need to yeah, I didn't know it was as much of a negative thing. I, I like, I, I get it. I didn't realize that though. I thought it. I don't was know more that it like, necessarily is. That's. I think that's the way I perceive it. Because if you're going to be, if it's going to be used that way, I mean, think about it. If you tell someone that they're ignorant, it's usually in, with a negative connotation. But ignorance is just a lack of knowledge. Yeah, it's I not thought like it, you're saying I, did, you're I guess I'm, yeah, I don't think there's any prejudice in, or malice involved. Okay. In it. it's yeah. just I, I think it's literally just being narrow-minded or um, okay. There you go. That's a, yeah. there, there provincial. You go. Okay. I guess yeah. is another way to say it. Yeah. Right. I mean, it, it, I would argue. <laughs> I would argue that a lot of people <laughs> that come over here <laughs> expect you to adapt to their cultures. I completely not, agree with that. I and have an insular agree. attitude towards American culture. And I'll leave it at that. But I do think it's still good to have an understanding of different cultures. Oh, sure. Not sure. necessarily concede to those, whether they be religious or whatever else, but just to have a basic understanding. I know, as an example, I do with my Muslim clients. I like them to know that I, and I know Ramadan's coming up, you know, or I know the Ides and I know how they celebrate even though I'm clearly not Muslim, maybe not clearly, because I guess I you're could like be Muslim. half. You're like half. You could be half. Yeah, I could be half. Yeah, yeah. you never know. Uh, but the point is, is, I think it just shows just a, a, at least a basic understanding of their culture. And I would think yeah. that that would be received as, oh, okay. Skip was respectful enough, you know, to know. And, you know, he knows a little bit about my culture, even though it has nothing to do with him. Yeah, I think of the, the I saw this video of some girl who was like wandering the streets. She escaped from her house. It was crazy, man. Like her and her brothers and sisters had never been outside in their lives. Like it was nuts. And she had a I cell think phone. I saw that. Yeah, she had like a cell phone with pictures on it where there were like shackles to the beds and stuff. And there was like nine kids or something and they were all mm -hmm. malnourished and like they didn't grow properly. This crazy couple, I saw like the police come to the door and knock on it, you know, and then make entry and find the, the, these poor kids. But like the girl didn't even know what medicine was. They were like, oh, yeah. do you take any medications? And she was like, what's medication? Literally. <laughs> and I think of the word insular when it like in that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like they had a very yep. insular. I don't know. How would you use that in a sentence, Skip? Like they had a. I don't know. I think you might be thinking of insulated. Like she was insulated from other. Maybe it, maybe there's a connection. Someone. Oh, yeah. I always get comments afterwards where people do have a, a, a much better linguistic understanding of the background uh -huh. of like Latin meanings. Oh of words yeah, yeah, things. yeah. So if you have insular and you have insulated, there probably yeah. is a connection. Tell there us. In some yeah, if you guys Gosh. know, if you have that, or you look it up and you want to prove us wrong about stuff, we like that too. Comment. I right? just like to learn. I, I'm, yeah. I'm happy to. I'm happy to hear it if someone explains the the nuances of things like that. And I like the comments. So you guys comment because it helps to boost our show <laughs> exactly. in the algorithm. You know. Exactly. All right, and uh, Nate, one more time. What's your code over there at Revive? Uh, my code is Nasty Nate, and then my YouTube is uh, Nasty Nate Spear. So we're putting out pretty good content now, just about weekly. So, um, and I should have some content out from the raw uh, gym grand opening this weekend. Which, if you guys haven't seen, go to their Instagram page, Raw Nutrition, and they have like a little video of it, and it's insane. Like this, yeah. will probably be the best gym in the U.S. I mean, I would assume. Like it's just, yeah, it's gonna be. And wild. It's a great but, price before the grand opening. I think they're saying seventy dollars, and it'll never change a month. I guarantee you, it will be double that, if not more than that, within four months. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, check it out, guys, and go to bodyberry.com if you want to reach out to Andrew for coaching team Skip. 
uh, com. if you want to reach out to Skip. You can go hit me up, McNallyDiets at gmail.com. And if people want to reach out to Cope for coaching for you, Nate, where's the best way to reach you? Uh, just at Instagram, at Nate Spear, one word. All right, at Nate Spear. And guys, check out our sponsors, truenutrition.com. Use our code THINK over there, supplementsource.ca for our Canadians. Thank you to everybody from Patreon. We're going to be doing a bunch of Q&A on the next episode. And uh, thank you to everybody for your support. Thank you guys for watching the show and hanging with us. And, 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 and thank you to everybody who's seen all of the neat episodes from all the way back at like Road to North Americans and stuff like that. You guys are freaking awesome for having followed that long. We appreciate you guys. And for another episode of Blood, Sweat, and Gear, We'll see you soon. Thanks, guys. Later, guys. Thanks, Nate. We appreciate your time, man. Thank you, guys. I have to go that to was the perfect. I, right I don't want to be rude. It you was started what? To you, Nate. Good seeing you. Hang you in too. there two and a half weeks. You're going to fucking kill it. But I got to pee. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying, I was just starting to fade, too. So it was a good time. <laughs> perfect, man. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you. See ya. Later. Tomorrow. All right. And we are still live, Andrew, just so you know. I know. You don't have to tell me. <laughs> Man. I'm gonna grab. Uh, oh, I'm gonna grab my shake real quick. Awesome! I'm gonna grab something too. I'll be back. Actually, I'll hang until one of you guys get back. That way, I can be with uh, our two people because we have two people hanging with us. Tell me who are the two people who are still watching the live stream. Say hello in the comments, please, so that I can uh, know who is watching us right now. Also, if you haven't got your uh, your shirts, I've got the uh, link in all the episodes. We've got the Think Big shirt. We have two different, if you go over to the page, we have a new, it's just bodybuilding. Hey, it's Matt Blevins is one of them. What's up, Matt? We've got your question, by the way, man. I saw your question. We were, uh, we were obviously, we're doing that interview with Nate, so we'll tackle your question on that ne- on this next episode that we're doing now. Hope you're doing good, man. Hope that everything's going good with all the stuff you you mentioned that you've been going through. Hope that uh, life is treating you all right, man. You got yourself a think. Oh, you got to get one. Nice. Yes. We we do have, I was thinking about a new uh, Christmas cabbage shirt with the cabbage on it that says keep swimming. What do you think of that? I think that might be a good one. And I, if we get that, if I make that. I'm just going to literally send one to Dave and not even tell him. But the problem is he wears 4X. So here's the thing, man. He wears he wears 4X, but I wear 2X, okay? And like 2X fits me okay. I like a 2X fit. It's loose, but it's still kind of like tighter up top. Um, when I went to the UK, I got two T-shirts in 2X, and they fit me like a large. Like they were way too small on me. So I'm pretty confident that UK sizes run smaller than US sizes. So I'm wondering if he can squeeze into a 3X. Cabbage juice for the win. That's what you want. How's your shirt holding up, by the way? We got somebody else with us, but they don't want to say hi, apparently. I would love for you to say hello. Um, just because it's kind of fun hanging out here on the live stream, especially a live stream with two people. You know what I mean? It's kind of like just very low key. In fact, we might do better mm. if I hang up and come back. So why don't we actually do that? Matt and whoever else that other one person is. Oh, who is it? Oh, it's Brian Ferrick. What is up, brother? How you been, man? Hope you're doing good, Brian. We got Brian Ferrick with us, Skip. Okay. Brian. You don't know. You don't know him. He I was a, wondering. I didn't know if I should know who he is. He's a local he friend of mine, and uh, he had trained with me through like a lot of really hard workouts leading up to contests and stuff. So you know the kind of bros you have that like show up to the gym when you need a training partner. Sure. He, he was oh, yeah. one of those guys who would make it solid bro. Yeah, exactly. Trained his ass off. He'd gotten into really good shape at one time, Brian. How far are you? You're how far are you from um, uh, RTB Gym? I feel like we went out there one time. I can't remember though. That uh, RTB Gym is freaking awesome though. Tino's Gym, and it's in Lincoln Park. It's it's where the old powerhouse Lincoln Park used to be, mm. and he he bought it out. Skip. It was one of those crazy stories where powerhouse gym, the owners of it. So this wasn't like powerhouse international. This is the owners of the gym. They had a big bench pressing fundraiser where they're going to like give money to a cause or something. 
Right. And while they had this fundraiser going on, they took uh, uh, they took memberships at a discounted rate and like made it a big party. And they're like, yeah, we're going to give this money away to like, you know, kids with spina bifida or something. Do this big bench press challenge. Take all these uh, new memberships and then literally the gym. they literally closed the gym after, yep. at midnight after everybody left and shut the doors and left. Excellent. Walk and yeah. they, Tino, so Tino bought the gym. And he rebranded it, RTB Gym. It used to be called Raise the Bar. And due to somebody messaging him and with somebody's lawyer messaging him, he can't use that name. So it's RTB Gym. And uh, it's, in, it's old school, you know, old powerhouse, all the old equipment. They've got a bunch of, before Prime, my brain's blanking right now. What was the brand before they were called Prime? Um, oh, I don't know. Uh, why is my brain blanking? It's me too. One of my favorite brands. I'll think of it. But he has a bunch of that stuff. He had dumbbells welded up to 200 pounds. Um, hmm. he, did, like, uh, he, he got like the rebarb that they use to, to make roll cages for race cars. And it's thin enough that you can use it as a handle, right? Nice. And so he had handles made and has 200 pound, 220 pound dumbbells. Good hmm. dude. Good dude. I'm hoping Ron does a mutant on a mission there one day. Anyway. I'm going to be done by 645. All right. Perfect. That's perfect. I'm going to finish this and we're going to come back, guys.